up in the fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel, a chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the evangelist apostle and pure disciple. May his blessing be with us all. Oh, Amen. And show is a benoche bestrotty then a source better susceptible and bnoti et on of nafsha and heavy.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, a beautiful story about our Lord Jesus Christ um, when um, he raised um, um, a son of a widow from the dead. And of course, um, if you would like to focus um, about um, what the Bible said um, about this woman, um, because she was so sad and she was a widow, um, and the Bible said that the Lord saw her and had compassion on her. So I'm asking myself, what did he see for him to have compassion upon her? He saw her at the lowest point of her life. She had um, a painful um, past and a very, very um, painful present. And she had also a very miserable future. So her past was so painful because she had lost her husband, a companion to her. And she was so sad, of course, because of that. And also, she had a very painful present because the only son she had depended on him. And of course, a mother loves her son so much, she has lost of course, uh, this is more pain to her present time. And also, he saw her future as well, and the future with misery, a miserable future. There is no companionship. <clears throat> there is no support. She has lost all whole family members. She will face loneliness, and she had no hope in life and no even desire to, love, to live. That's why when she was there, large crowd with her, many people with her to comfort her. Many people can see and can feel what she is going through. It's very harsh, very tough on her. So the Lord saw her at the lowest point of her life. And to see her at the lowest point of her life, of course, this is something very important to us because sometimes when we're at the lowest point of my life I can approach people to gain some kind of support or comfort from human people but actually those people fail to give her comfort and when the Lord saw her the Bible says had compassion on her and said to her do not weep and for her cry and for her tears, of course, were the sign of agony from inside. And the Lord has felt her emotions and her feelings about this. And he knows how to make her happy and to take all the misery away from her, all the sadness away from her, and to feel supported and to give her hope. That's why he touched the coffin and he said um, to the man, Arise. And then when, you know, um, the young man arose, of course, he presented him to her. What a great joy, what a great um, hope in life, what a great support in her um, uh, life. And no one from the crowd could have done that except our Lord Jesus Christ. So at the lowest point of our lives, we need Christ. In any form, in any shape, we need Christ. He's the only one who's going to help us. When our Lord Jesus Christ has met the paralyzed man, he was, it was the lowest point of his life. He stayed for 38 years. He lost hope and he lost any kind of support. He didn't have any human hands around him. The, the widow had a large crowd. That person had no one around him. And also, in addition to all of this, he had the pain of his illness. He was sick. That was the lowest point of his life. But the Lord came up to him and said, do you want to be made well? So the Lord himself approached him. It is exactly the same scenario when the Lord approached this woman and this widow. 
was the lowest point, and the Lord made him well. Why? Because this is the role of our Lord Jesus Christ. He came to him to give him hope, to give him health, to give him support. Also, someone like the sinful woman, when he met her, this is the lowest point of her life. She was so sinful, and everyone knew that she was a sinful woman. She had tried many things, but meeting with the sinful woman that's at the lowest point of her life made her um, like, you know, saved. She was saved from all her sins. She was saved from even from that um, words and of the mouth of many people. Sharp words criticizing her, making her feel so little, but the Lord has met her at the lowest point of her life and made her something very valuable. Even till now, we praise the sinful woman for her tears and we use this um, gospel and in the midnight uh, prayer for us to copy her and to learn from her. She became like an icon in our church in, in the, in the, through the gospel, so we learn from her how the Lord has met her at the lowest point of her life. Also, those people, they had confusion in their lives, like the Samaritan woman. She had a lot of confusions. She had a lot of wrong concepts in her life. And because of the wrong concepts of her life, she was so sinful to the point that she lived with many people as boyfriend, girlfriend, and even the one, like, you know, he lived with her even who wasn't her husband. So that concept of her life, because of her confusion, the Lord has met her at the lowest point of her thinking, thinking this is the life that she will desire to have in her life. But the Lord has met her and saved her. And instead of offering her the, world, the water of this world, he has offered her a living water that will never be thirsty again and made from her a great preacher. She left everything. She left her pot and went to the city and said, I have met someone who has told me everything I have done in the past. Could be the Messiah. She became a preacher. From where? Because the Lord has met her in the lowest point of her life. Also, the Lord has met someone, had no reputation, hated by everyone. He met Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus was a tax collector. And of course, um, because of, uh, of this, like, you know, many people hated him because he used to, to, to charge them extra for himself and also okay, for the Roman Empire. But at the same time, when he, the Lord has met him, and he accepted, like, you know, the invitation to go to his house. Salvation has come to him. And he raised him from the lowest point of his life, okay, for him to become really, really a good example that he has welcomed Christ. So meeting Christ at my lowest point of my life is so essential. Will make a great change in our life. Will make a great impact and a great effect. We are tossing by a lot of wrong concepts in life, where we have been suffering from a lot of psychological issues. And when I meet Christ, Christ will take this away from me, and he will raise me to the level that he wants me to be at. So meeting Christ is something really, really important for us. And as you see, the Lord touched the coffin, and he spoke to the man, to be raised. The same thing. We need to meet Christ so what we can feel the effects of um, his presence in my life. The problem is we don't seek him. And we have a lot of doubts about him and a lot of confusions. And we see what is tangible around the world and we enjoy these things. But actually, we need to see that there is someone that okay, will help us. Why? Because the world will never give you satisfaction. You will be like, you know, uh, like a bigger every time I need to seek attention from people. I need to seek support from people. 
I need to, to enjoy life. And I need these pleasures and desires. And every time I will seek them, I will fail. And I will never be satisfied. And the world will put you down simply because nothing good is coming from the world. So to, today, it's a really a good opportunity for all of us. Lord, maybe I, it doesn't seem to me that I am at the lowest point of my life. But consider me, okay, I'm the lowest point of my life. And I know you will appear to me. And you will touch me as you touch the coffin of that person. And you raise the him from the, the death that he went through. And be, when you, someone is going through that type of death, people they need to see the difference. I will never be able to see that if I am like you know, dead through the sin that I'm living in, except if I see the opposite, I see the resurrection. People, when they enjoy the sin and they are adapted to live in that sin and accustomed to live in that bad habit, usually I don't see there's other life I can have. But say to the Lord, Lord, even if I don't know what it looks like when I am with you, but I do have faith in you that you will appear to me at the lowest point of my life to raise me from my sickness and my illness physically or to help me to raise from the death of the sin that I'm going through any type of sin and any type of pleasures that I have. Lord, touch me and raise me. You have an opportunity today, how? When you, Christ will touch you through his body and blood, actually it's the same action when he has done it to the, the son of the widow. He will touch you through his body and blood today. And by having that touch, having the faith in you that he is meeting you at the lowest point of your life and he will raise you from the um, death of the sin. So every sin we do, any type of sin we do, either lying or um, having any kind of um, uh, pleasures or um, lack of forgiveness or hatred um, or any type of adultery, all these sins, the wage of the sin is death. So all of us who are dead through that sin and we need to raise from this death to enjoy the resurrection exactly like that son. What a great joy for this widow when to see her son raised again. What a great hope in her life. What a great support. Um, what a great um, um, turning point for her life. I don't think she will look around and say, okay, Christ, like, you know, has done wrong to me. No. Christ has always um, done good things to people. And people will remember what Christ has done. So for us today, um, we ask ourselves, I have done many things bad in the past. I have um, hidden a lot of sins no one knows. Could be my lowest point of my life. And I need Christ now to raise me from that death. Christ is willing to touch you personally today through his body and blood and to make your life completely different and you will see a different type of life. People, they make it so difficult for you to live. Will make the, like, you know, for you it's so impossible to live in this world with this type. I would say to you, many people, they say it's very hard to, to live um, a pure life. In, it is impossible as um, a young um, teenager or a young youth to live a pure life. It is impossible. But how about the saints in our church? How about those people, they live the pure life? They could have done that without Christ? No, of course. They needed Christ in their lives to live this pure life. So call upon him and say, come and touch my life. Touch my senses. Touch my heart. Touch my mind. So can I raise from, um, from that type of um, death that I am going through? And by doing that, as those people who look at it and glorified him and said God has visited his people by raising such a great um, prophet, the same thing, we're going to praise you, Lord, and glorify your holy name when I see myself at the lowest point of my life and you touch me. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Oh,